Hi there. Do you get the feeling that things are just a little bit crazy at the moment? Well, you're right. Things are crazy. Britain is crazy. And I don't mean that in the fun, figurative, this place is like crazy, man, sense of the word. I mean it in the not remotely amusing, seriously mentally ill, a danger to yourself and others, soft restraints, no sharp objects, and heavily medicated sense of the word. Britain in the year 2018 is clinically insane. Why? One word starts with a B, rhymes with Brexit. You see, this is what happens when you allow your country to be governed according to an insoluble paradox. The Leave campaign won by promising the impossible and having won, pledged to deliver the impossible, apparently forgetting that the thing about the impossible is that it's impossible. Hence the name. We have dedicated our entire political establishment to doing that which cannot be done and as such our country is now nuts. We're being governed by HAL 9000 at the moment basically. What do you mean you've never seen 2001 A Space Odyssey? Okay, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Seriously, why haven't you seen it? You really should have done by now. It's not as slow and boring as everybody said. All right, it's pretty slow, but it's not boring. Anyway, the second half of the movie, don't worry about the first half, that's about a bunch of prehistoric monkeys being taught the meaning of life by all-knowing chocolate bars. The second half of the movie is about a manned mission to Jupiter in 2001, pretty optimistic, Stanley, during the course of which the ship's onboard supercomputer, HAL 9000, experiences some kind of psychotic breakdown and starts murdering the crew. Now, in 1986's Not As Good But Still Worth A Look sequel, 2010, The Year We Make Contact, they retrieve HAL 9000 and discover that the reason he went mad is he was given two irreconcilably conflicting sets of mission parameters, and trying to resolve that which could not be resolved drove him mad and he started trying to murder everybody. And that is literally where we are in Britain right now. And we all know. Everybody knows. But nobody's saying anything. We've seen the elephant in the room. We've shot the elephant in the room. And now we're gambling our future away with the dice we made out of his teeth. And meanwhile, you've got the Julia Dunning Krugers of the world giving it, oh, don't be ridiculous, saying we can't thrive outside Europe. Look at all those countries that are not in Europe. They're doing just fine. Yeah, see, what you've just done there is the equivalent of standing on the roof of a 10-story building, going to the edge and saying, Of course it'll be okay if I jump off. Look, those people down there are on the ground already and they're just fine. <laughs> now, I'd just like to point out that when I said that which cannot be done, I don't mean we can never, ever leave Europe, whatever happens in the future. Of course we could, in theory, but not cheaply not easily, and certainly not the kind of time frame we've allowed ourselves this time around. You see, it's not a question of cancelling one arrangement. It's a question of cancelling hundreds of arrangements. Over the four decades that we've been part of this European experiment, our society and economy has organically fused with all the other societies and economies in the community. And it would be a question of severing each of those connections individually, and if at all possible, replacing them with something which works just as well, if you don't want to do yourself immense damage in the process. You see, people talk about leaving Europe like it's just a question of getting up and walking out, like, I don't know, an amicable no-fault divorce or resigning your golf club membership. It's not. It's actually rather more like trying to separate conjoined twins. Again, it can be done, in theory, but only extremely carefully by people who really know what they're doing in a very long and meticulous process which could still, with the best will in the world, all go horribly wrong. You don't just grab a pair of ankles each and give them a good odd yank. And this brings me back to a point I've been making in all these videos, and on Twitter, and even in some of my songs, which is that even if you voted leave in 2016, and indeed you would again, given the chance, even you've got to see that the way this is being done is not going to work and there is not time to fix it. And that even if you really want Brexit to happen, the only sane thing to do right now is to pump the brakes, take a step back, and maybe take another pass at this. Which brings me to why I'm here. Now, I'm recording this on Thursday, October the 18th, which means in two days' time, on Saturday, October the 20th, there will be the People's Vote March of the Future 
in central London. Now, I went on the last People's Vote March in London in June. You might recall I made a video about it. And at the end of that video, there was kind of a little post-mortem section during which I pondered the effectiveness or otherwise of this kind of protest. Well, I think the four months since then have answered that question for me. Yeah, this matters. This works. Things have changed and things are changing. And they're not changing by themselves. They're changing because we are changing them. Now, since June, the idea of a vote on the final Brexit deal has gone from being a pure fantasy to being an impossibility, to being an improbability, to being a distinct possibility. People are now quite openly talking about it like it's even money as to whether it'll happen or not. And more and more people and organisations are getting on board. Uh, the trade unions increasingly are on board. Big business is on board. Now, every halfway legit political party is on board with the idea of a final deal vote, with the exception of the Conservatives, UKIP and Labour. And if I were a Labour Party member, that would make me extremely uncomfortable. But like I said, this has not happened by itself. We're making it happen. We startled them back in June with that kind of size turnout for a movement that was supposed to have packed up and gone home two years previously. And we've been making a bloody nuisance of ourselves ever since, and we need to continue to do so. But this is the big one on Saturday. It's not enough to start them this time. This time we've got to scare the shit out of them. So if you can make it on Saturday, please do. I know not everybody can, but if you're sitting on the fence, if you're hemming and hoard about it, don't assume this is going to get done for you. That was a mistake I made back in 2016. I think it was the mistake we all made back in 2016 was assuming that somehow sanity would prevail by itself and that the politicians are going to take care of this for us. They didn't, and they won't. This one's down to us. I hope to see you there. This video was made possible by the supporters of my Patreon project, who helped me make fun things while receiving great perks and rewards. If you enjoyed it, why not follow the link and join us? Oh, my comedy fans, I am going to do something which isn't about Brexit one day, promise. It's just kind of on my mind at the moment, you know.